Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. It's my privilege to review a book which I found fascinating. It's uh, very popular, it's um, got a lot of publicity, and it's now in a paperback. I've got the hardback here, which I'm reviewing, but it's now just come out in paperback. Um, I'm, just, I'm reviewing this literally after its appearance a couple of weeks ago, so end of April. Now, it's called The Secret Barrister. Don't know the name of the person. It's got a subtitle, Stories of the Law and How It's Broken. And it's published by Macmillan. Now, my wife Elizabeth, um, I did a short review of this when it first came out. And this is a more detailed, longer review, which Elizabeth um, took the lead on. And we had a long chat about it. And our title for the um, book review of The Secret Barrister is are the criminal courts flawed? Seriously, the secret barrister tells it like it is. And I'm afraid a lot of people may not like it, but that's exactly what he, she or it does. And I'm very glad that they've done it. Let's look at the book. Here it is. There we go. There's the front. There's the spine. And then there's quite a lot of comments on the back. Well-known people, all of well-known elite persons you know about have made comments. Uh, very useful comments they are too. This is um, a bit about the secret barrister. It says junior barrister specialising in criminal law. I'm not going to say any more. Uh, and uh, this is a little bit about what the book contains. If you open the book up, um, there's quite a lot in it because um, there are quite a lot of little notes at the back. There's no index at the back as such. But there are some notes right at the back in the last chapter, which is what's called the notes section. And that, I think, is well worth reading for anybody who aspires to become counsel. Now, that's the front of the book there. Just make sure. Obviously, there's a nice little dust cover, which I'm trying not to have fall off. There's the front page, anyway, there. And then there's a dedication. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to say anything, just read the dedication. It's there. And you can see what uh, that, the, the, the person who's written this book wishes to say. Then you've got the strength of the actual contents of the book, which, which shows the, the points that emerge from the book. And I'm not going to spoil too much because I think you should read it. <coughs> but the book opens an introduction, my opening speech, and it runs through. And anybody who's familiar with the criminal justice process will understand the book very quickly. It's an easy to read book. Um, there are a lot of um, a lot of criticisms, let's be blunt, a lot of criticisms of the system and a lot of examples which I, I have to say and many of my colleagues are very, very familiar with. This is not something that's new. Uh, the comments that have been made may not go down very well with certain people, but the fact of the matter is the system is not working properly. They say stories of the law and how it's broken. Well, that's a very strong allegation. However, let's just examine what's in the book and what happens. And let me, without giving too many spoilers away, give you a reason why you should read this book. It's, it was top of the hardback list. It, it's now just coming off the top of the paperback list. And you can get it quite cheaply in Sainsbury's <laughs> and elsewhere uh, as a paperback. But it's worth reading because if you have concerns about the criminal justice process uh, specifically, and of course it's it's not just criminal justice where the problems are, um, this book does help. So what do we say? It's a book that's destined to become a classic, no question. Everybody's read it just about, at least in legal circles, or claims to have read it. And if you'll excuse the, uh, excuse the cliche, it seems to have ruffled more than a few feathers. I can certainly say that. I've met certain unnamed persons who have not been too happy about it. But all the better, as a scathing expose of some of the most conspicuous flaws in the criminal justice system in England and Wales. So the secret barrister can safely be described as unique. And I think the anonymity has to stay, even though the person or people who've been responsible for this will be turning up at the bar conference in November 2019. So if you are curious, you will know that that 
whoever this is presumably will be behind a screen, which will be quite interesting. Certainly, the power of the book derives overwhelmingly from the personal experiences and insights of its author, or authors, the secret barrister. And I take it it's one person, a male or female. No idea, uh, of course, who it is, and we're not going to. We don't need to go into that because of the bullying that would appear and all the threats and things if we, if we uncovered who it was. It's much better just keep it as it is. The anecdotes in it and the homely uh, analogies range from the hilarious to the horrific. And as any barrister can tell you, whether practising in the criminal or civil courts, the revelations it contains are authentic, although some readers, but not many, might disagree with some of the opinions expressed. The book has undoubtedly, of course, been a, public, a publishing sensation um, for its publisher, um, Mac Millen. Now, um, the focus of the book is the criminal rather than the civil justice system, uh, the process, and all those connected with it, from judges and magistrates to the court staff and the defendants themselves, not to mention the state of the court buildings, some growing old gracefully, others positively decrepit, but not quite crumbling into the dust just yet. Naturally, there's been a lot of speculation about who the secret barrister is, with some barristers suspecting, because of the sheer number and variety of cases discussed, that this secretive, publicity-shy individual is more than one person. Nonetheless, the secret of the authorship of the book is a lot less important than what's written in it. That's my point throughout this review. I can understand, says our secret author, why people might only think of criminal justice in the abstract, never anticipating any personal involvement in it or having any familiarity with it whatsoever, except through watching courtroom dramas on the television. Now, big mistake implies the author, who warns, speculatively at least, that it's certain that at one point in your life you or someone you love will be in a criminal courtroom whether as a juror, witness or victim, or possibly even worse, someone accused of something you didn't do. That's why the book has a vibrance about it. What you or anyone in any of these situations will hope for or expect is fairness, which, according to this passionately disillusioned lawyer, is sometimes in short supply. One example is the way some magistrates tend to prefer to believe police testimony rather than that of the defendant, even when supported by several witnesses. That's the defendant. In the words of the author, the book's basic aim is to explore why criminal justice matters and to show how I think we're getting it so wrong. Offering much to contemplate and get furious about then, the book will resonate equally with civil court practitioners, probably, certainly people like me, particularly over some annoyances, as, say the author, the matter of court listings, which take little account of barristers' availability, and on the occasion when they do, there's a climate of chaos, delay and adjournments, often with the spa, to make you unavailable. And what about the now quite commonplace practice, or is it a necessity, of switching cases from one court to another, with little or no notice given to the participants in a case, namely the lawyer, their bewildered clients and the other witnesses, who on the same day have to scramble into cars or public transport to reach the correct court, which is usually miles away on the other side of town, or often in another town altogether. And I make no no bones about this, it's happened to me on a regular basis, and I'm sure it happens to many other people. It's a fact of life, you have to get over it, I suppose, but it does not look very professional, and it's the government who are responsible for that. No one else. Now, to put these matters in some uh, sort of perspective, then, I think it's fair to say that no human institution is perfect. We don't expect that. We do expect professional behaviour, though. But it's no good to have too many imperfections either. What is alarming about this book, then, is that someone felt compelled to write it in the first place. Someone who felt compelled to conceal his or her identity, and I wonder why. I don't think you need to answer that question. But secret or not, the author is quite obviously a barrister, which does give the book its immediacy, its authenticity and its clout. While most people will live out their lives without coming up against the criminal justice system, 
The rule of law impacts on everybody, and anything serious that threatens it is not a good thing. Recall, for example, the number of prosecutions that have been reduced by about half. So how much criminal activity is going unchecked to the detriment of public safety? It's also been announced that the overall budget for the Ministry of Justice has been cut by 40%. But we may well be seeing some changes. There have to be modernisations, there have to be changes. But let's get it all in perspective. Let me say seriously and finally, these are serious issues. It's encouraging that so many readers have come to the view that such developments are of concern just by reading this book. And the fact it's been so successful and it's now in paperback shows that it's not a subject that we should ignore. Good thing then that The Secret Barrister is now out in paperback so it gets an even bigger audience. One last point. I'm going to show you that. That is The Secret Barrister. We don't need to know who he or she is. Read the book. What is your solicitor being paid? Right in, right in the middle. This is halfway through the book. Remember what a solicitor is getting. Remember what a barrister gets under legal aid. I'm not talking about money in figures. I'm just talking generally. This is an excellent book. Read it, especially if you're practising. Do read it because at some stage there has got to be some sort of change because things cannot continue the way they're going. And I think that's really the message that the secret barrister is trying to put across. I'm very grateful for the highlighting of so much of the difficulties. Let's hope we can get round this problem. Thank you. And I wonder if there'll be a sequel. Bye bye.